when both of you playing real life people, how scary is that going into this? Because you got to do somebody right, right? Yeah, I think it's terrifying. Um, you know, it's one, one thing to play someone who's lived, it's another thing to play someone who's lived that's still very much in the zeitgeist. Um, and that, that, that the mass public has a very strong, personal, intimate relationship with. And I think the hardest thing is, is that the image, the enduring image they have of him is an image of this 40-something year old man presenting projects, products in a keynote. Um, and, and the hard thing was, is while making the film, remembering that he wasn't always like that. He wasn't always that guy. He became that guy. And that guy became polished over time into, you know, into who he was. And so I think like wanting to portray him honestly uh, and not uh, offend the people who cared and loved, loved, cared about him and loved him, I, I think was really scary. I understand Steve Wagner, he was a little, the rumors are is that he wasn't pleased with the way he was portrayed in the movie, not you obviously. Any truth to that? I, you know, I, I don't know you would have to ask Steve Wozniak. What I can tell you is is that... I thought he came across as a very likable guy. Well, I do, I do too. I, I think that there are a couple of things that factor. One is, unfortunately, I don't think he's seen the whole film, so I think he based it on two minutes of, of trailer material. Two, uh, he is, you know, publicly acknowledged that he's involved with a competing Apple film, so I'm sure he's uh, got strong opinions either way. But what I want to say about that is, is that, I, you know, I absolutely adore the man. I, you fall in love with the people that you're playing, obviously, and, and I would welcome him to come and, and watch the movie with me, and we'll talk about it after, and we'll sit together, and we'll hold hands, and I'll walk him through it, and I'll say, Steve, it's going to be okay. The gate, the walk in this, I mean, that was one thing that, that I thought, I mean, you make it look easy, but having to do that over and over and over, how difficult was that to get down his precise walk? Did you watch film over and over? No, I saw this. There was this weird documentary that was done. Not weird, really, but it was a documentary that was done. I think Mer Merrill Lynch sponsored it or something. It was like a big Merrill Lynch thing at the beginning. When, when Steve was building uh, Next, and um, it was kind of this behind the scenes look at his retrospective on you know how he was going to build this next new phenomenal computer. And there was some really great footage of him just kind of walking through a field. And I noticed this kind of bizarre walk that he had. Um, and then uh, and then I started looking around at other things of him walking. I was like, oh wait, that's the way this guy actually walked. And so I just started trying to emulate it. And then I, I, I learned that he went on hikes a lot when he took meetings and he would go and walk with people around. So I would start to take my meetings during the day while, while going on walks and you know try to walk like that. And first it was like five minutes and then I would forget to walk like that and then 10 and just kind of practice. No, I don't, no. It kind of messed up my back a little bit. Like, Yeah, well, changing your walk actually changes your entire biophysical structure because, I mean, it's really like everything's sort of sitting on top of this axis, which is your pelvis, and the minute you start to, like, change the way that that works, it actually really, like, threw, and I threw my back out, and I had to have a chiropractor come and, like, sort me back out. Yeah, because I actually changed my physical, I, so I'm sure I've changed the way I actually walk a little bit. You're such a huge player in the Twitter arena, so to speak. Anything that you go, gosh darn it, why did I tweet that? Or anything that happened that is a funny social media story. I've had plenty of gaffes. Um, and and I think it's one of the things that, that makes you just kind of want to jump in a hole and hide. Um, <laughs> no, it really is. Like, you, you know, I, I came home from work one day and I was working in like, probably 17 hours a day at this point, just feel really focused on a project and not really paying attention to what was going on uh, in the news or in the world or in media. I came home and I saw this this um, coach of this football team that was being fired. He was an older man and I knew that over the past several years that he'd been, you know, getting injured on the sideline and things. And I thought that he was, he was fired because he was getting a little old and I tweeted something about it. I came to find out there was a entire scandal that was taking place and you know the response was just this overwhelming you know uh, chastising of a comment that was and totally out of place totally you know uneducated comment and I think it just all it does is it you know the, you know it, you wouldn't have all these celebrities like quitting Twitter all the time if if it wasn't like this just blastful like um, 
feedback loop that where people have absolutely no tolerance for inaccuracy or people being incorrect unless it's in an effort to take somebody down. Um, and so, you know, it is what it is, and I think that you just have to be a little bit more careful about what you say. And instead of being in a world, world where we edit later, we need to edit first.